Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is our very first chapter uh, in uh, the book Enterprise Systems for Management. And the book and this chapter is going to introduce you to what ERP systems are and how can organizations uh, manage these kind of systems. The learning objectives of this chapter, what we are trying to uh, achieve by the end of, of, of this video is for you to understand how did ERP systems evolve, how do they, what, what, what kind of systems do we have before ERP systems and what led to the introduction of ERP systems. We'll talk about what are the components of ERP systems, what are the parts that make the system, what is the architecture, what is the benefit and the drawback of having an ERP system within organizations. We'll talk about the different roles that people, vendor, consultants, and the organization play in implementing an ERP system. You will, you will see that an ERP system is very complex and that um, it, it's not just like vendors, like you buy the system and you can run it right away, but you have to actually customize the system to fit the organizational need, which is a very complex process. So who else should be involved uh, in the process? We'll talk about the ethical and global and security challenges that face ERP systems on a daily basis uh, as they uh, are being used in organizations. So before we talk about enterprise systems, we all have to agree that information systems in general became a very integral part of the life of any organization. For any organization to be successful, they have to have the support and they have to use information systems in order to support their daily business processes. So um, again, whether we are talking about uh, any kind of an industry, uh, here for example in Qatar oil and gas, healthcare, um, tourism, um, uh, uh, development, any kind of industry, you will see the, the, the need, the great need for information systems. So information systems uh, allow you to automate a lot of the processes, which means that the computer perform uh, a lot of work. Whether you are, for example, doing accounting, so those of you who are accounting students, you understand that there are, um, I know that there is a like quick book, um, different types of software SAP that can record uh, the uh, accounting uh, transaction. Um, in human resources, for example, if someone has had any experience of, of being hired, well, you submit now your application online. So there is a system that actually store your application. Um, when you get hired, all of your information is being stored your dependence and everything. Um, again, with the case of marketing, keeping track of customers, their orders is all done uh, through information systems, finances, again, customer service, and all kinds of operations need information system to support them. Now, um, when we look at organizations, we see information systems throughout the organization at the very top to support executives and these are what we call executive information systems. And we have in the middle uh, management information systems. These are systems that generate a lot of reports. And then we have at the very low level operational systems that supports the daily business transactions, the day-to-day -day business uh, transactions. So as you can see in figure one, any organization will have different departments, different functional units, a finance department, a human resource department, an accounting department, operation, marketing. These are what we call the functional areas, or uh, sometimes they are called functional silos. Um, these are like the different areas that focus on specific or have specific objectives uh, for the organization. Now, these silos or these functional units uh, cut um, vertically through the organization. So they are, they start at the top and they go all the way to the operational level where the day-to-day -day activities. 
every organization will have these three layers of management, the operational, the middle level, and the strategic. Well, let's start with the strategic. It's, it's much easier for you to understand what, at the strategic level, what we are doing. At the very top of the organization, top management layer at that um, level, are concerned about defining the strategy for the whole organization, the strategic goals and objectives. What do what is the organization after achieving or wants to achieve in the market um, regarding its customers for its products and, and, and so on. So as you can see, there is no really uh, a clear and cut answer for that kind uh, of questions. Uh, the strategic uh, objective, what should be the strategic objective or the, st the strategic focus of the organization, it's not a clear cut uh, answer. So we say that the kind of decisions that are done at the top are unstructured. We do not know exact steps that a top level executive should go through in order to define the strategy or define the, uh, the strategic focus of the organization. They require information from all over. So any decisions that are made at the top of the organization require information from all, from throughout the different functional units. You cannot make a good decision at the top without taking multiple perspectives. So even if the decision has to do with human resources, you still have to take into consideration the financials, um, marketing, operations, and accounting, and, and everything. So the kind of decisions that we make at the top are unstructured. They require uh, integration from different functional areas. Uh, we do not, usually uh, there is a lot of information within the organization, so uh, at the strategic level, at the top, executives require summarization. They want summarized uh, data. Uh, usually, again, the decisions have to do with the future. And any um, decision at that level will have an impact on the whole organization. So if we look, again, at the strategic level, we said we are focused about the, the objectives for the whole organization, the strategic objective that the organization should focus on. These kind of questions are unstructured. We do not have um, a, a detailed or a structured way of answering these questions. And that's why the kind of decisions there are ad hoc, um, are unscheduled. They depend on the market, they depend on what's going on within um, the society as a whole. Executives at that level require information from different units from the different functional areas because the decision will have an impact on the whole organization, so they have to take different perspectives. And usually the decision has to do with the future, so it's forward-looking, and as we said, it impacts the whole organization. Now, we'll go to the low level now, so we'll leave the mid-level and we'll go to the low level. At the low level, you have a lot of information. These are like the daily business processes, daily activities that we do day in and day out. So a lot of information in there, but the kind of decisions that you deal with at that level are very structured, which means there is a very detailed plan, a set of steps that you have to uh, do in order to answer a question or um, make a decision uh, at that level, at the operational control level. So that's the low level. Decisions are very structured. We know exactly what we should do, so it is pre-specified. We know what information we need to look. The, every decision will have to deal with only a specific area, so finance is just focused on finance, human resources. It's not the same as at the top. Here, I'm just like focused on the specific functional area. 
so I have an internal narrow focus. The mid level the, is in between, so it, uh, some of the decisions are not very clear, so they are semi-structured. Some of the decisions are still structured. Um, information, again, I have to integrate at that level. In the middle level, I still have to integrate between different functional areas. But uh, the decisions do not have um, a lot of impact. on. They are still uh, compartmentalized, which means that they focus on, again, a specific area. They are not the, one, the same as the ones at the top where they ripple throughout the organization. So what kind of information systems did we have? Before ERP systems, we used to have in, uh, information systems that focus on a specific area. So we have one for HR, one for accounting, one for customer relationship, one for manufacturing. So we have a hodgepodge of independent, non-integrated systems. We have what we call an islands of information systems. Information systems that are separated, they are not integrated, they don't talk to each other. And they are hodgepodge, meaning that they come from different vendors. So you have one from Microsoft, one from SAP, one from Oracle, and no integration whatsoever. They don't talk to each other. They don't share information, which means each one has its own uh, information. Now, it says here that this creates bottlenecks and interfere with productivity. This is a question that you will have to answer uh, in class. I want you to think why would the independent, non-integrated systems cause or create bottlenecks? And how do they interfere with uh, productivity? So think about that question, and that would be a question that you will write on your card um, coming to class on, um, on, uh, on Tuesday. Now, if we look at the actual needs of managers, managers, especially at the middle level or at the upper level, they require data from different functional areas. Why? Because we said it's rarely the case that a decision made at the middle level or at the top level that it would have impact only on one area. You find that the, the decision will have impact e either to all over the organization will have impact on all the whole organization or at least more than one functional area. So as a result, managers, when they make decisions, they want integrated data, data that comes from different functional areas, which means that the applications should also be integrated, meaning that the applications talk to each, each other, that they share information. They share information and they share the information about the resources that we have within the organization. I cannot make a decision, as we said, at the middle level or at the top level without taking into consideration the impact of that decision on all other functional areas. So even if my decision has to do with marketing, there is a part, like let's say, for example, we have... Um, we are trying to design uh, an, advert an advertisement campaign. So now, yes, this has uh, a lot to do with marketing, but then at least I have also an impact on financials because coming up with um, an advertisement uh, strategy um, will require money, will require spending money. And you have to make sure that the resources are available and that you will have a return on investment. So there is a financial aspect to that decision. I also will have to integrate information about the product. So I have to, have to, to talk to manufacturing, find out 
what are the strengths of the product so that I highlight these in the advertisement campaign. So again, any decision will have impact on multiple functional areas. So managers really require integrated data and they, as a result, they want the applications to be able to share information and to be able to account uh, or uh, take into consideration the different resources that are available within the organization. Now, if, if you look, I, I'm, I'm assure, I assure you that many of you who have taken, for example, uh, marketing and management, they heard about um, customer focus, that um, companies now, in order for them to make money, they need to have a customer focus. And that really came about because of the globalization that we have seen. We are no longer competing with um, national uh, organizations, organizations that um, share the same geographical area. But now we are competing with or organizations all over the world, and that's because of the Internet. So the only way or one of the ways that you can distinguish yourself within that large or huge or global market is really to provide distinguished service to the customer and to be customer focused. For you to be able to provide that um, high quality service to the customer, you have um, to be integrated yourself. The organization needs to be integrated. Why? Because uh, think of yourself, I mean, like as a customer um, and you are trying to approach a specific organization. Now, if, if you have a complaint, let's say, uh, it really is very frustrating if someone tells you, oh, you really need to talk to another department and you, they um, route you to one depart from one department to the other. And that's because whoever answers the phone or whoever is dealing with your concern doesn't have, um, doesn't have a whole picture of you as a customer within the organization. So... And, and again, that's because of lack of integration. Organizations have found out that um, for you, for, for, for them to provide a high quality service to a customer, they have to have a complete understanding of the customer. So whoever has direct contact with the customer should have access to the accounting, should have ha access to the history of that customer, should have access to the profile of the customer to understand and his characteristics to understand how better to serve that customer and all of that. So for, for you to be able to provide a holistic service to the customer, the, the organization must be integrated across different functional areas. You cannot be successful when the functional areas are not talking to each other. This brings us to the need for an integrated system. And um, it started with ERP system, Enterprise Resource Planning Systems. You will see that really the definition today is that it is an information or it's an umbrella kind of a system that integrates data from across the different functional areas within the organization. But it did not start as that. At the very beginning, it was only focused on inventory and then started focusing on or adding production and then uh, eventually evolved into what we see today, an integration of the different functional areas, HR, finance, production, inventory, and all the different um, aspects of an organization. So an ERP system today is an organization or an enterprise system. It is a system that serves the whole organization and is integrating the different functional areas. They are integrating the different functional areas like accounting, finance, marketing, um, HR, and so on. So we have a huge system, a large system, 
It has different modules. These modules um, support different functional areas, but they all store data into one function, into one central uh, database. So all of the information is inside of one central database, and that database is uh, a store where you pull the information or any time an information is stored within the database, it's available to all functional areas. So we have integrated data, we have integrated cross-functional areas. The integration of data happens because of the central uh, database, one place where all the data is being stored. The functional areas are integrated um, which means that they are not separate. We don't have separate system, one for accounting, one for finance, one for HR. They are all under one umbrella, under one system. We have modules, but the modules share information. So the information flow dynamically, immediately, in real time, between one functional area to the other. Let me give you an example. If, let's say, a customer places an order, so he goes over the internet and order a pair of shoes. Now that information is stored, is sent to the ERP system and stored inside of the database. The ordering system will show that I have um, an order that needs, and, and it will send information to or will check automatically whether I have stock of these type of shoes uh, available in the warehouse. If I have them, then the shoes will be reserved for that customer. Once they are reserved, then they will be sent to packaging. I will have all of this is done automatically. The system will uh, say that it is okay to release one pair of shoes from the warehouse, send them to the packaging area. They are packaged and they are ready to be shipped. Information now, once they are on um, or sent uh, either by air or by uh, truck, the information now is reflected on the accounts payable, on the accounts receivable, I'm sorry. That the customer, now I need to charge the customer for these pair of shoes. The customer may have a credit card uh, number on file or may have submitted it with the order. Now I will charge the amount. Once I ship, I can charge now the amount on the credit card. And once I collect that amount of money, then I'm going to reflect it on accounts receivable and uh, cash. So it is the information, as we said, flow dynamically. As soon as I enter the order, the order, the, the customer hits submit the order, the information is sent to the database, the order table is, reflects a new order, um, information is being sent to inventory to check if we have if we have uh, the the pair of shoes in stock then they are reserved for that customer and again things go automatically so um, there is um, an okay or an um, a permission to um, take one pair of shoes out of stock and send them to the packaging area as we said and the process go uh, automatically. So a lot of automation is done. Information flows from one functional area to the other. So when we are dealing with the order that sales, then we go to inventory and then reserve. And then we go to packaging, which is transportation and shipping. And then we go to accounting to charge. So information keeps moving from one functional area to the other immediately. And as soon as one process or one step is done, then the information um, is sent automatically to the next uh, step. Of course, you see a lot of efficiency in the process. 
There is no waste of time. So instead of taking two or three days in um, uh, uh, finishing an order or sending an order, shipping an order, now it doesn't take more than half a day because a lot of the, the, the steps are automated by the system. So you can see from uh, this figure that uh, ERP systems are integrated systems. They integrate uh, different functional uh, areas together. They are web enabled, so um, they have a web client that allow either employees or clients or vendors to access the system. Um, you also have like GUI tools. Uh, these are like the front end, the screens. So there is the back end and you have the front end. The integration at, uh, between the functional areas is uh, possible because of the central database. So you have one location for all of the data. Data enters only once. Remember when we talked about the silos, um, the information silos? We said information systems were not integrated and each has its own data. So what do you think this will uh, cause? What kind of problems will it cause? And, and that was a question that I paused uh, a couple of slides uh, ago. So again, think about when we have these multiple systems, these, each one has its own data, what kind of problems will that uh, cause? So um, the ERP systems, as we said, integrate between the functional areas. They have one central database. They are web enabled. They allow uh, clients, employees, and vendors to access the system through the internet. Um, and they have GUI tools. These are like the screens uh, that allow the interaction between either the clients, the employees, or the vendors and the system. Okay. So, how did ERP systems evolve? At the very beginning, they were just focused on inventory and they were mainframe legacy systems. These are uh, large, very large systems um, that reside on huge machine. Uh, mainframe is a big machine that has a high uh, processing capability in order to enable the processing of uh, multiple transactions um, and so on. Um, these evolved in the 1970s to include uh, production planning. So now I want not just like to keep track of inventory, I also want to plan how much to produce based on the demand and, um, and my needs, the, the market and so on. So in the 1970s, we have the material requirement planning. Now, um, they were using third generation software like COBOL and Fortran, which is not very user intuitive. So with the evolution of a fourth generation uh, database uh, software, we uh, had a new uh, evolution of the MRP. So we have MRP2. But again, the focus was on manufacturing. In the 1990s, we started thinking, okay, now we need to integrate between the different functional areas, um, which are uh, accounting, uh, marketing, finance, and, and so on. And there came uh, the enterprise resource planning. That it's not just like focusing on uh, inventory and production, but the whole enterprise. In the 2000s, we started uh, thinking about integrating also the supply chain management, the customer relationship management, and the sales force. So um, all of that came together under one umbrella, under uh, which is the ERP. And you can see that um, when we start working with SAP, that all of these areas are all brought together under one umbrella, um, which is the SAP. Okay. So what is the purpose of ERP systems. 
the main purpose of an ERP system is to support daily business processes. They want to support the business process. If you look at any business process, whether we're talking about selling, purchasing, uh, production, warehousing, they go through or they cross different functional areas. Let's think, for example, about selling. So, the initial stages of selling involves marketing. So, trying to get an inquiry from a customer and following up by giving the customer a quotation, giving them discount in order to motivate them to actually purchase, and then receiving a purchase order from the customer and entering it as a sales order, that's all the work of marketing, the sales department. But then once the customer submit the order, then we have to go to inventory, uh, check the inventory, reserve, as we said. And then we go to shipping, we package and we ship. And then we go to accounting. So any business process um, it actually uh, trans transcend beyond uh, one functional area and requires the integration of multiple functional uh, areas. Any ERP system, like uh, for example SAP, they have 2,000 different business processes that are built in the logic of the system. Now, the, the system comes with all of these business processes and it is a prepackaged solution, which means it's already, it's already built. So all of the logic is already within the system. There is a, a, a very high chance that the business process within the system does not um, exactly fit the, the business or exactly match the business process within an organization. So the business process may or may not agree with the current process within the organization. Now, the vendors like SAP or Oracle, they say that the business process is based on best practices. They are based on best practices, which means this is the best process in the industry. So, of course, they are telling that to companies, to their clients, so that the company changes its business process rather than change the system. So, when you are implementing an ERP system, you have two choices. Either you change your own business process or you change the software. Which one do you think is better? Which one do you think is better? So um, I want you again to think about that and think um, that's a, again the second question that you will come uh, uh, with on, on, on Tuesday um, trying to answer the, the question which is better to implement uh, changing your own business process or changing the ERP.